Hey guys, Nathan Madsen. I'm the owner, composer, and sound designer behind Madsen Studios. And I wanted to take a moment to walk you through this demo cue I wrote called Photosynthesis. Why the name? Well, there's some really neat uh, sample libraries out there and this website called Audio Imperia. And one of them is Photosynthesis. It's this granular cello synth that does some really, really cool things. So typically when I'm buying a new sample library or sample libraries, I go through and I will make up a mock queue session where I just usually name it, as you can see right here, messing around with photosynthesis. And that's exactly what I did. I just popped in some of these, uh, in fact, I'll show you the, <clears throat> the UI here, the, the user interface once it pops up. So this is um, the photosynthesis main engine. This is a patch code above the rain. And I went through and I just boot up a whole bunch of these new sample libraries I purchased and also some more expensive uh, mainstream sample libraries. For example, uh, I got some Project Sam stuff in here. I got the Tundra stuff from Spitfire in here. Um, and also something from um, Indignus Audio called the Resonator. It's a really cool gu guitar patch. I'm going to walk through each of these and show you how they sound and my process in putting them all together. This was a really, really fast just test queue. I wasn't even sure I was going to release it. It's just something I want to do for fun. So let's start with this patch. I really like this one. This is, again, photos photosynthesis, excuse me. And once it pops up here above the rain, and I think I kept it pretty much just as it appears as it pops up. You'll see this is panned to the right, just a little bit, 20%. That's the idea there. So for this one, Oh, I also was testing out some stuff with movement from output. Uh, movement, if you don't know, it's a rhythmic, um, various effects can be applied type of um, engine, basically. You can go through, you can say what type of quanti uh, quantization you want on your different rhythms and any effects you have. And so I've been experimenting with this to just give things a bit more depth and movement instead of being as static. Here's another patch from the same cello library called Photosynthesis. And I will show you which one this is. This is Granular Free Boeing. This is without movement attached to it. Let's hear it with movement attached. So you hear that movement it's giving it, going through various filters. So these two things together, and they're both panned opposite from each other, were the first things I put in this piece. And I literally just played this in as one big take. the idea. All right, let's move forward to the Nailstrom. This is also from Audio Imperia. I really liked this library. It's a cigar box, um, cigar, cigar box guitar, which I don't even know what that is really. You can see here I EQ'd a whole bunch of it out in the lower end from starting about 500 or so. Um, I just paired that back and then I also add some movement to it this pop up as well. I'm running a little bit slower since I'm streaming video and recording video and audio at the same time. So I have some of a some movement attached to it. Let's hear it without the EQ and without movement. It's a cool sound, but um, it really is just sitting there. There's nothing evolving about it. So let's apply the EQ. Just 
took some of the sound out. And let's apply now the movement. Now it has a lot more vibe. Let's hear the two cello pads with the Nelstrom. Okay, starting to get something going here. We'll talk a little bit about bussing here in a second, but first let's jump forward to some strings. So I used a couple different libraries for strings here. I used the Albion, I believe Albion 2 strings, and I also used Tundra, Albion 5. That's, that's their one of their latest Albion releases. And then Project Sam's Bigger Than Life patch from I think Symphobia 2. So let's hear those, and, and by the way, the way they're panned, I've got Albion just a little bit to the left, the tiniest bit, Tundra a little more to the right, and then Bigger Than Life is straight down the middle. So let's listen to those. Wow, I'll get you a little bit closer to the entry point here. You get the idea. Simple strings, nothing fancy there. Let's move on to the resonator. So this has a really great, great sound to it. And I'll show you the UI as well because I like how he has things split up. You can do a couple different key switches if you want based on your articulation range, which is all dynamic right here. You can move this up and down based on whatever you want it to be. I had it set to 45. So if it's 45, it's doing this articulation. And if it's 100 or higher, it's doing this articulation. And so that's a really nice way of going through and being able to see how it's set up. Um, this is from Indignus Audio, and I really like the sound of it. Let's listen to the resonator by itself. You can see I have some reverb on, reverb on there, and I also have some EQ happening. <coughs> You get the idea. And what I've not touched so far, Orchestrator is just a bass patch. It's got some double basses and it has some singing in it. And I have this down low in the mix. I'll talk about automation here in just one second. Very, very simple, nothing special. Uh, and then Trailer Motor is a 16th note guitar arpeggiator, basically. Just have that giving some motion, some drive. Simple. Okay. And then, probably the last thing that was new for my library, at least, are the impacts. I have two of them, and they're panned differently, just a little bit four and five. And I'm doing some EQing, as you can tell. But these two together. Sound like that. Okay, we'll talk a little more about how I have my busing set up. Um, simple risers from Native Instruments and an East West cymbal swell. And up here are four vo uh, vocal tracks I recorded. And I did these one take, no cleanup, no pitch shifting, no editing whatsoever, just some EQing and then applying effects. And I'm also applying the um, movement effect from output to my vocals as well. They're unison all the way until this next, uh, next cycle, about bar 25. Halfway through the piece, 
you'll hear it splits off into a dyad, two notes. Right here. And some of the effects there are pretty harsh, but I wasn't going for a clean sound. And it's still lingering as you can hear. All right, um, that should be it. Let's talk about the bussing real fast. All right, so I have all my vocals going to here. And then everything else is a family. Riser is going all by themselves. The guitars, this would be the Nellstrom Cigar Box guitar, and this would also be the Resonator guitar going here. All my strings here. The pulse, this would be that 16th note guitar driving element. The pads, these uh, would be, I think, I might have everything going to um, bus one. Okay, yeah, I've got the synth basically, the, those two ideas going, and I think this one as well, yeah, is going to my pads. Uh, drums are all going here, except for the risers, they're separate. And then you'll see here ensemble. Now, why did I do ensemble? I have everything from vo uh, Vox, guitar, strings, pulse, pad, they're all going to ensemble. I'm doing this so I can side chain, so I can do some, some compression when I'm doing, <clears throat> excuse me, when the drums hit, the big impact sounds hit, it's going to re uh, move down the volume of the ensemble to give more space. I can show you how that will look here in just a second. Sorry. You see this go down right now. When the drums hit, and that releases back. The power behind that is it allows more space for the transient to hit when you come through the mix, and then the music comes back up gradually. So your music sounds full, but the impact still has weight. Then. <clears throat> I have a couple things here. I have ozone going on, ozone seven, and I have a limiter going on. So let's take a listen to the entire thing. And again, I'm not sure if I said this is like two nights worth of work. Um, it started as something that I wasn't even sure was ever going to see the light of day, and then I got excited about it and decided to make it into something a bit more polished. <laughs> So let's talk a little bit about my automation. I said I would talk about that. So I'm a big believer in everything should be doing some type of movement. Either it's coming into the mix or it's leaving the mix. If you have too much of just stacked stuff happening, that results in a pretty boring, pretty bland mix. <clears throat> and it takes away from the emotional impact of your song. Even if you have really crappy samples, if you put a lot of love and attention into the production of those samples, you'll be surprised how far it can make your piece go. So we'll look here uh, quickly at the vocals. So you can see they're all starting a little bit soft. They're kind of tracing the same line, although the, vo uh, the 
values are not exactly the same across the board. Some of the slopes are different, more steep or more gradual, and then also some of the levels are different. And in some places it's growing faster, and in other places it's growing slower. So I just wanted it to creep in, and you'll notice here, all of them are dipping down. Well, why is that? Because I wanted the orchestrator, and I want the strings to really start to grow and take over that moment. Um, my approach to orchestration and arrangement and production, which kind of they all really, really overlap, is I want things to move around and give each element its moment to shine. The beginning of the piece, the uh, the thing that takes my focus at least is the Nailstrom, is that cigar box guitar. And behind it you have these pads creeping in. Everything's fading in some from a lower level up to a higher level. So I thought that was kind of neat to have that happen. And then you notice that the trailer guitar, that's the 16th note pattern, it is just here and it grows a little bit. This is when the da da di that string uh, string idea happens and it starts to really kind of build into something new. Well, it's actually right before that. I'll pick up into it. Right here. It's a big moment. So the guitar comes up a little bit, but then it immediately comes back down and grows into the final climax of the piece. You can hear the, how long that vocal element is there. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so strings, I want them to have some big swell here and then come down and make space and then put up one more time and then die off. Uh, Resonary Guitar is just kind of doing some noodle noodling so it doesn't move around too much. And the Nailstrom comes back it's almost to its highest, basically its highest point at the very, very end and then fades out. Uh, the risers and the cymbals are just there. Um, it's kind of a weird idea, but I like to think of connecting tissue. You have this over here and this over here, and you need to bridge them in some way. Well, risers, cymbal swells, some type of glissando or uh, some type of sweeping movement can really help bridge gaps. And it can make a piece feel like, okay, we're transitioning smoothly from element A to element B. So that's what I was trying to accomplish there. Um, if you are not routing your stuff out via buses by families, I strongly, strongly recommend that you do this because first off, you can apply compression and EQ to these families, and then you can really spend some time mixing. And final point I'll show you is I actually was mixing in or automating in, excuse me, some changes in the vocal line and even in the master bus line, the stereo out. It starts at negative 1.2 and creeps up just a little bit and then fine at the end. So there's this growth throughout the whole piece. I didn't do any tempo changes in this piece. Um, like I said, this was really not meant to be something for my demo reel. This was just something for fun. And it turned into something I really enjoyed. I hope you enjoy. It seems like the initial reaction is pretty strong. but. Uh, and forgive me, this is my first time doing this whole streaming thing, so uh, I'm a little uncomfortable in front of the camera. I'm going to get better at that. This is a Christmas gift for my wife. I hope you like it. But um, yeah, check out, so the different different sites I talked about, Audio Imperia, check that out, really, really good. Check out Indignus Audio, um, that's where the guitar patch, the resonator came from. Of course, Project Sam does amazing stuff. I've got Swing, I've got Orchestra Animator, I've got Symphobia 1 and 2. Um, let me see what else. Um, the trailer guitars where the trailer motor, that 16th note guitar driving thing came from. They also had some nice uh, impact sound from the multiverse in there. Um, East West is a good library for certain things. And of course, Native Instruments Complete uh, is really, really good for a lot of variety of stuff. So that's my story. I'm sticking to it. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks so much.